So I got some leftover materials laying around the yard. This is leftover playground equipment, something that wasn't safe, just sea channel, um, a long piece of angle iron, some flat steel that uh, uh, panel that I made uh, my barbecue out of, and all this stone. And I pulled this stone. Um, our old barn was made out of it. Um, I took the barn down when I was 20 and uh, made some walls and stuff around my old house and I still have some left over. Um, so I'm gonna make some bench seats for on our deck. Um, Seven o'clock at night, 7.30, so I can make a little bit of noise yet before I piss off the neighbors. So I'm gonna start cutting off some steel, working in my brand new work boots. And we'll see what they look like at the end of this job. Uh, I got a big party coming up this weekend and hopefully have the seats done by then. So here we go. I get the welder ready to do my brick ties, which would just be a bolt that I weld into the uh, mortar. And then all my leftover barn stone that's uh, held a barn up that was 120 years old and on to the next purpose. And stone going to go all the way around. And away we go. So this will be the longest ongoing project that I've ever tackled. And anybody that comes and sees this in the middle of the yard goes, what is that monstrosity? Well, this is my vivid imagination with too many contacts and a little bit too much time, I think. This is the ultimate barbecue. What started this whole deck is uh, this barbecue. I was working for a demolition company and uh, they were about to scrap this barbecue. Now it's an industrial stove with six burners, two ovens, a uh, charcoal grill, and a broiler. And uh, so I paid them a hundred bucks for it and it's quite large. So um, on my old house, I pulled down barns and used all the barn board for trim. And one of the barns had all this stone as the, the bottom floor. So we took all the stone home and I'm, I'm building a barbecue here. Every one of these stones has to be cut. When, when the person was building my house, I helped uh, lay some stone at the front and I mixed the mortar for them so I figured out what the right uh, mixture of mortar was. As I go up, I've been welding all my brick ties to it so that it is 100% solid. Um, if we're ever in a hurricane, I'm gonna go underneath here, I think. The other side is actually an open fireplace. We still have to put a gate in front of it. We've used it a couple times, but we need to build a, a, a section in front yet and put a screen in there. Um, we have to use the fire brick, otherwise all these uh, field stones will just snap and shatter. So this is uh, a project going on about five years and hopefully finish in the next year or two. <laughs> to do this mason job, I use the type, uh, type S masonry cement by Holcomb. I've had really good luck with it so far. Um, dries nice and quick. What it is is one shovel full of the type S and two, two uh, scoops of masonry sand. You can pick that up at the quarry anywhere, or you can buy it uh, by the bag too from uh, any, any stone supplier. So you just mix a little batch in the wheelbarrow. I tried a concrete mixer, that didn't work. If you wanna do a power mixer, you gotta get, you gotta get the one with the big paddles on it. Um, but it's not worth it cleaning it for the little jobs that I do uh, like this. Consistency is pretty much like pudding, where you can run your shovel through and it stays where you want it uh, without it falling back in again. Too wet of a mix and it'll just run down uh, the stone. For cleaning the joints, you can use your finger. It's, uh, there are tools to spread the mortar and it does start to get uh, tough on your fingers after a while but it's hard using the tools because there's no even gap in between everything. So a wire brush works really good, um, just in the different stages of drying. You can see this was done a couple hours ago. You can still get at it. This was done about an hour ago. It's really trial and error. I usually cut the stones in half so I can get uh, two sides of the stone. 
makes it lighter. When they rock a little bit, little pieces of gravel just to hold them up, just for a bit. When it's hard enough, you can take that little stone away. Just where the stone sits, butts up against, just put a little bit on the sides and on the bottom, a little bit against the mating stone. My theory is always a little better to have too much than not enough. This mortar is about 120 years old. And they knew how to do mortar back then. So we set the three of them, the other one's still too green, you can see it's still pretty dark here. So I got one more pier coming here, and then the cushions from our chairs will sit in here nicely and it'll be nice in front of the fire. So pretty heavy, and these end up on piers underneath so that they hold the weight, and they're probably about two, somewhere between two and 250 pounds each. You can move them, but they're uh, not without scratching the deck. So I got to notch a little uh, chunk out of the two by four in the corners where they meet, put the pails in, filled up with dirt, and uh, we got a nice little bench set, you know? So I put a leveling kit in the Tahoe to make the back scrunch down a little bit, but I don't really like it. So I think I'm gonna take them back out again. Oh, my poor Tahoe. I think I have just enough stone now to uh, finish the fireplace. It's a truck, come on, it's got diesel in it. So this fall was the perfect time to finish the barbecue. I love this hard, dumb, physical work, and the colors were just magnificent. And I, honestly, I gotta get this stupid thing done. So I was talking to my wife, and I said, we need a headstone, and I, I asked her, um, what do you want it to say? We can, we can put our... Uh, our names on it, the family name, or the day we got married, or the day I bought the property. She goes, well, how about you uh, put the date of when you started this project on there? And I think she's just trying to rub it in my face, but um, it is November 2016. <laughs> And this will be the headstone, 2009. <laughs> With raw, dried out, cracked fingers and a nice late fall to work into, I was able to lay the last stone. Man, what a feeling. Uh, just enough time to take down the scaffolding and kind of sweep off the deck. And then the friends came over, light a fire and have a beer. Man, what a feeling. Here we go. You happy that's done, Kitty? Oh, you're happy mommy's gonna give you something to eat. Jerk. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you love the channel, consider picking up a tape boss to make those projects go faster so you got more time to watch YouTube. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.